Welcome to Wargaming Garage and welcome to this Space Marine Army Showcase video where we look at the Ghost of the Forge, which is the Wargaming Garage's uh, Space Marine Army. Now, when I got back into the hobby, um, <laughs> I bought the Dark Imperium box set, as I think a lot of people did, um, and the Space Marines and Death Guard. And uh, that was after I'd been bought a little starter set for a birthday and um, I decided we were to decide what um, chapter to do. I like the salamanders, but I didn't want to go full salamanders, so I went with a successive chapter. However, I kept them in the salamanders paint scheme, so um, just in case. Um, but they have grown and grown and grown. Um, the ghosts of the forge have now have their own backstory, have their own lore, they have their own characters. As you can see, there's two here from um, the uh, second company. So I thought we'd just take the chance to go through some of them, where we're at, and what the future plans for the army are. So I still try to and like to run tactical marines. Um, they, there's, a, there's a reason behind it um, when we come to the chapter law. Um, as you can see, the chapter emblem is actually um, a skull with two hammers underneath it. Uh, the, the ghost of the, of the forge and you can also see that we still have um, some salamander pauldrons because the, the, the ghosts were a big believer in um, honouring the past and remembering and obviously uh, and sort of remembering where you've come from and what's forged um, the backbone of the chapter so wherever possible they will use and reuse old pauldrons or bits of bits of um, armor from when they were salamanders um, so there's a little bit of work going on with these they were in squads of five um, i have moved them into squads of 10 in order to uh, with the onset of 10th edition i know we can combat squad them but i've um i just need to work on some some decals, got to do a lot of decal work on this army at the moment. I, I tend to rush and, or basically get them painted and then want them on the table and decals are a thing for another day, but I need to sit and do what feels like about three weeks worth of decal work. Um, but there's there's two or three squads of the Tactical Marines. Like I say, I do still like to run them where I can. But in contrast to that, we have um, a couple of squads of assault intercessors and we have several squads of um, intercessors which are up on the screen now. Um, we know those in squads of five um, and yeah so, so some of those uh, one of those with the um, with the silver backpack that you might have seen on one of the other videos. Um, he's the very first miniature I painted when I got back into the hobby. But uh, yeah, so there's about four, five squads of intercessors plus the two squads of assault intercessors. So yeah, um, quite a quite a number of of primarius level marines as well. Um, I like to have a few um, what I call sort of um, special support units, I guess, for space marines, uh, firstborn wise. I love centurions. I know they. <laughs> A bit of a marmite model that you either I think you kind of love or hate them. Um, oh, I think they're great. I think they're just everything that is 40k. I mean, what what is not to like about three marines within side marines um, with huge big drills and melters and nipple guns? I mean, it's just amazing. I think they're really good. Um, I'd like to get some more. I've only got this squad at the moment. Um, you notice that some of the models have got. Um, these nameplates, I get them from versatile terrain. I actually get them, get the STL, and then um, Hobo Joe he prints them off for me, so I can then put them on here and and do it. So some some models across the army, um, I have got nameplates. Um, I try to get to a point where a lot of the a lot of the sergeants, as you see in the codices, where you see the sergeant, the, the squad name after the sergeant. But they are um, named um, not all of them have got nameplates yet but we're working my way through them um, but all of the characters again either waiting for a nameplate to arrive um, or, or have got one and yeah so I've got a number of yeah, the devastated squads um, 
the Centurions, things like that, that um, are like I call my sort of my special special support squads for the for the first board. So who doesn't love Dreadnought? Um, there's something particularly harrowing about them um, and heroic about them, um, all in one. Um, here we've got um, one of the old venerable Dreadnoughts, just a Dreadnought now, uh, and a Redemptor Dreadnought. Uh, there's, there's two of these, and one is a Contemptor, which I run as a Dreadnought now, and I've got three of these Redemptors. There are more Dreadnoughts on the way. I've got um, two Leviathans that I'm going to run as Brutalis, because they're about the same size, roughly. And I have an actual Brutalis Dreadnought as well to build. So they're on the they're on the build table right now. Um, but yeah, cool blimey, don't half love a Dreadnought. Um, and I, I, try and, I try and include them in lists as often as I can. Um, so yeah, just, just, yeah, love them. I think they're great. I don't think any Marine Army is complete without some level of armour. Um, in this instance here is a magnetised predator, so I can run it as both variants and or just a rhino um, and the land raider. The land raider is normally what I've put the centurions in and that's been known as, you know, that's their ride. There is another land raider on the painting table that's very nearly finished as a land raider crusader. So I can put some terminators in that and give different options for either running up the table or deep strike. Um, in addition to these, there's two more rhinos. Um, one for um, one's very early edition with the with the um, uh, ram on the front, um, and I've got an impulsor and a repulsor. Uh, I'd like to add a few more tanks. Um, I'd like to run a couple of repulsors and the, and uh, probably at least three three impulsors so I can get multiple units up the field quickly. Um, but that is all plans for the future. But yeah, um, again. So the Land Raider was something that I, when I, when I was first in the hobby as a in Rogue Trader, Land Raider came out as a model. It was like, God, I really want that. Could never get it. Could never afford it. And then um, when I got back into the hobby, I, I treated myself to one. And obviously, it's a lot different than when the original one came out. But still, something about a Land Raider. Within the ghosts, um, chaplains hold a really vital role. Um, they are responsible for um, instigating what we call the ghost dance, which is basically whipping all the troops into this big frenzy. Um, but it's not without its purpose. It basically, within the law of the chapter, the chaplains are seen as a way to bind the souls of the of past brothers within the ghosts to the current living brothers, uh, a way to bind the souls of the dead to the souls of the living. Um, and they use the souls of the dead to guide them in battle. So they hold a really vital role. And uh, again, I try and make sure there's at least one or two chaplains in each list, um, whipping the troops up into frenzy. Um, Adal here, he's um, one of my favorites. Um, he once held the line against the Death Guard assault on on uh, on, on board Fate's blade, and um, yeah, he's a he's a he's a bit of a badass. So yeah, uh, chaplains they 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 really are important to the chapter. Again, no chapter is really complete without some level um, of librarians playing a part within the field of battle uh, and here we've got a couple of uh, librarians in Terminator armor and, and one of the Primaris librarians and um, they don't tend to see the field as often as they probably should um, but um, again they were, they were this one in particular the the one from Leviathan was really fun to paint was really really fun to paint um, so uh, it's um, yeah so this is the the, the three librarians I have right now. Playing support roles um, and 
no less important roles really for the chapter are like the apothecaries um, and the ancients. Um, so I have, I have a Primaris apothecary um, on the way, it's on the painting table along with the tech marine and um, uh, the biologist uh, apothecary. Um, and I've got another Blade Guard Ancient as well that's being painted up. But um, yeah, the, again, the Ancient probably doesn't see the, bat the, the, the field of battle as often as he should. Um, I do, there's something about standard bearers. Um, <laughs> something semi, you know, both, both inspiring and uh, semi ridiculous, I suppose, to a point. But um, yeah, so this is the standard bearer for the second company for the Ghosts. Um, there we go. Moving on to some of the more veteran aspects of the Ghosts, um, here's one of the, uh, the Blade Guard Ancients. Um, you'll notice they all wear Reaver helmets. I, it, that's it, an aesthetic choice, really. I do think they're probably the best part of the Reaver unit is the helmet. They do look really intimidating, and um, so that's why I've, I've kept them on. Um, certain units, whether it be assault intercessors, um, lieutenants, um, blade guard veterans. Um, you'll notice that the, these blade guard have black helms. If for, for the for the ghosts, um, you'll notice that, for example, you've got um, uh, black helmets for all the sergeants, and then uh, you can see that, but the lieutenants have a white helmet with a black stripe. And then as you get into um, Captain C, you tend to have the gold helm. Um, so these are all former sergeants um, selected to represent the, the, uh, and the field of battle as, as veterans. And they keep their helms and they keep their colours to remember where their, what their station was. And you'll see that's the same for the Stern Guard veterans, uh, veteran squad. Uh, I've got two of these. Um, well, I've actually got three of them, but the third one is a is one of the firstborn ones. Um, and I think the loadout has changed, so I, I, I thought, think they're ineligible to be used. So I've sort of, descent, sort of dispersed them into a third Devastator squad. So I've mixed up different models. So some Marines might look a bit fancier than others when they hit the battlefield. But as you can see, these... Marines also hold the Black Helm um, from their sergeantry days as well. So here we go into some level of chapter command um, for the for the second company. Um, and oh maybe for the first company, I can't remember now. Um, I think Irvin is the second company uh, and Drakir is the first company along with Creed. So um, it gives me a few options to run who, who are, who are you know, who is going out for, for, the, for the day, if you like. If I want something with Hellblasters, I've got Creed. Uh, if I want something to run with um, Intercessors or Blade Guard, then I've got Drakir. Um, and again, if I want something to run with um, Aggressors or the Heavy Intercessors that are on the way, um, I've got Irvin. So that's some level of chapter command. Uh, there is a second version of Drakir coming, which is the, the jump captain, um, the jump intercessor um, captain. Uh, I've kept, uh, I've kept the chainsword and sword as well. I mean, it's not an, it's not a legal loadout, but I mean, I think well anyway, I think it looks cool as hell. You know, he's carrying his, um, he's carrying his shield on his back. I don't quite know how he's going to hold his shield and those two, but I wouldn't want to meet him on a, a well-lit alley, let alone a dark alley. So, um, yeah, that's sort of some level of chapter command. So as we get into some uh, the higher levels of the chapter command, we've got one of the, the jump lieutenant. I know you can't run him as, as one now, but I do when I'm in my narrative games. I don't take him if I was to ever go competitive, which I don't do very often anyway. Um, but I mean, look, he just looks cool as you like. And with his, that's his bodyguard, you know, the veterans, long time veterans from 
the chapter that know know that the the, the the carry the background of the chapter with them. Um, you know, these are one of the fair, one of the very few that understand what changes happen to the chapter, which we'll come to soon, um, and what changed them forever. Um, not necessarily the new Primaris or Tacticus Marines, whatever you want to call them now in 10th, not so much for those, but certainly for the the original um, uh, ones that set out on a, on a, a, um, a mission of a long, long time ago and were forever changed when they entered the Vordrast campaign, which we'll come to. But that's one level of chapter command um, with the lieutenant, with his, with his bodyguard. And so we come to chapter master Petra Lachlan. Um, he is the head of the chapter. He is the chapter. Um, and the story behind the ghosts is they essentially they're, they're, they're a ghost of the former selves. Um, they set out as salamanders thousands of years ago. Things went wrong. It took them thousands and thousands of years to to actually carry on their mission, which they eventually did. But on the way, with various different things happening and various different campaigns they entered into as they worked their way back, they came back a changed chapter. Um, they, they came back um, of having picked up um, a, a particular civilian um, uh, population uh, to uh, populate the fleet with. That's where the ghost dance comes from. That's where some of those beliefs um, come from. So they still hold a lot of the salamander values, but they're, they're, they're changed and they're twisted slightly for this ghost dance. And then couple that with the Vordras campaign, where, um, which was something that was run locally for one of the clubs. But in essence, it gave the, the ghosts an opportunity for a, um, a back the, their law, which is the gods of fate wanted to enter the great game and they needed a champion to, to, for their cause. So um, essentially every time uh, on the battlefield, if you fell, often you would, um, if you were deemed worthy, you'd wake the next day, um, healed, ready to go, but you still remembered everything that was happening to you and everything that had happened to you. Um, and that was across all the factions that happened. And the ghosts came away forever tainted with that, where Captain Petra Lachlan has been the chapter master for a very, very, very long time. And he's on the guard, the lieutenant's on the guard, the lieutenant himself, um, the centurions that you saw, some of the firstborn, and only a, only a, uh, you know, they're part of this almost forever tainted um, uh, thing that happens to them. So, um, and sometimes they don't necessarily do the work of the Imperium. They may unknowingly do the work of what fate requires. So that's the sort of background of, of the Ghost of the Forge. But Captain Petra Lachlan, he's named after um, uh, a friend of mine who unfortunately, sadly, is no longer with us. Um, and it's just my way, maybe silly way, but it's my way of actually um, honouring him. So that's Captain Petra Lachlan, Chapter Master of the Ghost of the Forge. And to finish off, here is the same Captain Petra Lachlan in all his glory as a Terminator. I did have an older Terminator model that was also had the nameplate Petra Lachlan across the front. Um, but with the new scale that came out and Leviathan, it seemed fitting to um, just give him a, a new paint job um, and just give him a little bit of um, higher stature. So um, that is Captain Petra Lachlan and his honor guard in Terminator form. And that sort of wraps up the Ghost of the Forge. Uh, that's the that's the army. Um, so what holds, what's what's the future of the army? Well, there's more models to come. As I said, there's Leviathan's being run as Brutalis. 
uh, Brutalis Dreadnought itself. There's some more Terminators on the way. There's some Infernus Marines coming. There's some Assault Intercessors. There's Fire Strike Servo Turrets. There's ATV Invader, uh, ATVs. Um, there's a fair amount to come still. Um, will it ever be finished? Probably not. It's a Space Marine Army, they're never finished. But um, yeah, that's the Ghost of the Forge. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing the models. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the army. And I hope you look forward to seeing them on the battlefield soon. And that's it from me. So see you all soon.